Hello guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be doing a, a lithium overclocking video. So I'm going to educate you guys on how overclocking works in lithium and show you how to put it into your minor batch file. So to actually run it with the minor program instead of actually overclocking with a external software like MSI Afterburner. You could just copy the same method here but put it into MSI Afterburner if you don't feel like you want to put it in the batch file but it will give you better efficiency if you do put it in the batch file. So there are some things that we need to know about a lithium mining before we actually start to overclock. As you can see here we are running some basic rules with mining algorithms where memory usage is close to zero and the core is all that matters. So a lithium is currently working off Blake 3 which is basically no memory usage in terms of mining. With Ethereum it was heavy memory usage but we've actually migrated onto coins which give us low memory usage like Alephium, Radiant and Casper coin. So there are different types of mining and this is just to educate firstly and then we'll show you how to do it. So firstly for the memory clock, we want to lock the memory clock to 810 megahertz because that's basically the lowest you can go without actually putting more stress on your GPU. Since the algorithm does not use any memory, we'll turn the memory down to save power and generate less heat. So there's no point having the memory on at all. And as it says there, some mining OS lets you do this in overclock panel, while other miners let you do this in the minor options. So we're going to go through, and today we're actually going to be using BZ Miner because that's the main one that I use. So I believe that BZ Miner is actually the best for overclocking and it gives me slightly better hash rates than lol miner right now so that's why i'm using bz miner and i'll show examples of all this but let's first continue with this so secondly we want to add a locked core clock to both limit the power usage and to be able to set a core offset later so we lock it and it says for most nvidia gpus well 3000 series so so i'm assuming a lot of you will be mining on 3000 series it kind of works the same for 2000 or 1000 but as you can see here, you'll find the highest efficiency is between 1305 and then 1500 on the core clock. So if you want better hash rates, but it'll give you less efficiency, you can offset the core clock a lot more, the higher the hash rate, obviously. And then we come down to the core offset. We want to add some core offset. So the core offset will still run at the locked core value with the added offset. So it basically locks it and then you add more to it. The GPU will run at a lower voltage and save power, so we're adding to more efficiency there. And the higher the core offset, the lower power and higher efficiency, as we just said. Most Ampere GPUs, which is the NVIDIA 3000 series, can handle around 200 to 400 offset. If the core offsets are set too high, GPU will crash. So we've seen, you know, thermal throttling and stuff like that. But if you put these core offsets too high, like if you put it the memory too high with Ethereum mining, it would just crash the GPU. So as we said, we're going to be mining with BZ miner today. So this is a standard batch file for BZ miner. I'm just going to go through all the kind of offsets that we're going to use plus the overclocks for overclocking with BZ miner for a lithium. So as we said, the first one, which is going to be the memory lock. If we go to BZ miner, we want to look for the memory clock lock which is gonna be down here. So we can copy this and we can paste it in by here. Remember there has to be a space between these. And then we wanna actually lock the memory at 810. So for more GPUs, if you wanna lock it again, you have to put a space and then 810 as well, corresponding to which GPU is on the numbers when you're mining, if that makes sense, like number one GPU or number two GPU. And then from the memory clock, as we said, we don't really need to use the memory clock, so we can move over to the core lock. Now, I'm mining with a 1080, so the core lock is going to be slightly lower than for the 3000 series. I believe I set mine at around 1280. So if we come here, we're going to look for the core lock, which is here. So this is locking the core instead of actually putting the offset on the core. We paste that in, make sure that there's one space between it. It can't be two because some things won't run if there's not the right command given to the GPUs. So once here, you just type in whichever one corresponds realistically to your GPU. You want to have it slightly lower for 10 series, slightly higher for 20 and then 30, then 40. 
Obviously, these GPUs, as they get better, they can actually handle more core lock. So the same goes for the offset of the device as well. And then the next one that we need to add is the offset. So as I said, 3000 series is going to handle between 200 to 400 offset. The 10 series that I'm working with for solo mining and lithium right now handles up to about 150. If I push it past that, it basically clocks out and then it crashes. So you want to tinker around a little bit. I'll show you some kind of basic overclocking that you could apply and then you can change just depending on your device if you want to push the hash rates higher or not. So we want to look for the core clock offset. So it's going to be here. We want to copy this and then make sure there's a space again, paste it. And then you want to choose your offset. As I said, for the 10 series, mine's normally around 120 to 150, depending on what we're mining with at the time. So these are the three basic overclocks that you want to be using right now. However, there are some other ones like the power limit. We need to actually disclose the power limit. And for lithium, the power limit is normally very, very low. I know you can get it down to maybe under 100 watts, 150 watts, depending on the GPU that you're using. The 1080 Ti that I'm using actually only uses around 92 watts when mining a lithium, which is very low usage of the power. So as we said there, we got the power limit. We just need to copy this and paste it in again. And then we pick a power limit. Now, the power limit for BZ miner is a wattage based power limit it's not a percentage based power limit so whichever watts you want it to hit basically at the maximum that's what you want to put in normally i'm going for around 95 watts for the 1080 ti that i'm using so that's what we're going to go with there and then lastly you can set the fan speed as well if we click on oc fan speed now this is also a percentage but remember it only runs one or two of the fans depending on how much fans you have on your gpu if you have three it will spin up two of them if you have two it will spin up one of them the other one is just an obligatory fan that you don't actually need to have running and i don't believe that the overclocking software or at least the mining software can actually activate the other fan so you kind of need to set it at a slightly higher percentage to make sure that your gpu doesn't overheat Normally, we're going to go with something like 65, just to keep it around 45 to 50 degrees, depending on the time of year. So now that we've got all of the overclocks done for lithium, we need to actually set it up so it runs the overclocks. You can't just normally run overclocks if you just double click. You have to set up the actual miner to make sure that you're allowed to run overclocks using the actual batch file. So all you have to do is click and save. You want to go into your basically minor file where all your batch files are you find the actual mining program the executable which is bz miner here you right click and then you click on properties then you want to go down to compatibility and you want to click this box run as an administrator once you hit this click apply and then press ok what this is going to do is every time you start up the miner it's going to ask you to allow the program to use it as an administrator. And then if you do that, it's gonna actually allow you to run the overclocks through your GPU because it needs access as an administrator to actually make changes to your GPU. So that was more of the education part actually done. Now, if you want overclocks for Alephium, you have to click on hash rate NO, find the Alephium coin, and you can click on benchmarks. So right here, it's going to give you a list of hash rates for mining lithium and efficiency for mining lithium. It doesn't really matter which side you click. Let's just take the 3080 Ti, for example. If we click on it, it's actually going to give you some overclocks that you can use already. This is estimates for a medium overclock. So they haven't actually put a higher overclock in here that you can use. So my example would be that you take this. So this is the core offset. This is the core clock lock. This is the mem clock lock. And this is the power limit. What you do is you take this and you run the miner up and then you edit each of these by around, you know, 50 each time and see which one gets the best efficiency as in not the memory clock because that's going to stay at 810. The power limit you could probably play around with around 25. You could lower it because it does say here power reported 170 watts. So that's nowhere near 300. 
And then you mess around slightly with the core clock and then the core offset, just to see if you can push the efficiency a little bit higher for mining a lithium. So that's pretty much it for a lithium mining. As I said, if you want overclocks that you can basically use as a base layer and then edit yourself, use hashrate no. I'll leave it linked in the description below. Plus, I'll leave BZ Miner linked in the description below if you want to use that as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and you learned how to actually overclock for a lithium and you learned why we actually do these certain overclocks for a lithium as well. If you did, please like the video and subscribe for more content like this.